Zeb Stryka is pretty universally known as bad competitively. It's got solid attack and nice speed with base 116, but it's frail and lacks good setup and move pool. But Gen 9 buffs Zeb Stryka by giving it access to Supercell Slam, which is a strong 100 power physical electric move, which is stronger than Wild Charge and no recoil. Unless you get the miss or hit a ground type, which does 50% to yourself. It has three good ability options in Lightning Rod, Motor Drive, and Sap Sipper. And using Sap Sipper, we can switch into a grass move to be immune to it and boost our attack by one stage. We use Flame Charge to boost our speed by one stage, and now the Supercells be slamming. Overheat can be a nice option to hit physically bulky Pokemon, and coverage with high horsepower catches people by surprise. Zeb Striker can be a pretty big threat, and we're gonna get this bad boy going. So I've just always really liked Zeb Strika in terms of you know, design and concept, and I've always wanted it to be good competitively. Now, the problem is, it is not really that good competitively, but it did get a little bit better with Scarlet and Violet, and so you already know we gotta make this underrated fella do some work. Now if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. Now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Greninja. As I decided to lead off with the Meow Stick, I was kind of thinking that maybe they would lead off with a Mian Shao like pivot U-turn lead, and I would be able to get up some gravity and potentially be able to do some flapple stuff. I now decide that it's not really worth staying in here and busting you know, my eject button early. Sometimes you just don't want to prematurely eject. So I decided to switch into Blissey. Now, as they end up going for the Night Slash, it turns out to be a physical Greninja, which makes We'll see a little bit less ideal on this matchup, however, I'm just fully physically defensive anyway, and it's, I'm able to take them all day as long as there's no crits. So, Blissey is here to do a couple of things. First of all, set up some stealth rocks and be thick as hell. We are, of course, already thick, so it's time to lay down some rocks, as they're actually going to end up switching into the Grimmsnarl. Now, Grimmsnarl, by default, you just imagine it's here with a light clay to set up some screens and just be annoying and defensive and then parting shot and get the hell out of here. So I kind of figured that's what this thing's going to do as I do set up my Stealth Rock. I also realized this thing can't really hit me too much in return. So the plan is to go for a Thunder Wave. If the Grimmsnarl wants to be annoying to me, guess what? I'm going to be annoying right back. I actually end up taking a Spirit Break, which does do a nice little chunk of damage as I hit it with a Thunder Wave. So judging by that damage, I honestly feel like this thing has uh, attack investment, and this is when I'm like, maybe this is one of them one of them offensive size zero waste little bastards over here. So I do get the Thunder Wave off on it, and I'm kind of just wanting to scout what this thing wants to do. I decide it's in my best interest just to go for a Seismic Toss. I can do some nice little damage, and also kind of see. It turns out it is going to go for the Bulk Up. So. Their offensive Grimmsnarl with Prankster, you're able to guarantee that you go first with a bulk up. And this thing is going to be a little bit more scary now. As I turn him into the damn earth and then throw him down, I obviously get my 50 HP. And now the problem becomes, uh, we don't really know what coverage this is working with. There's, we've seen the spirit break, we've seen the bulk up, and I kind of just want to scatter it out a little bit more. They're going to go for a second bulk up. And that's a little bit scary, because that kind of tells me, just for a second, I'm like, hold on. As I go for that Seismic Toss, we bring it down to a round half, as we're not scouting any leftovers. I'm thinking to myself, surely this thing is not going to have rest. That's kind of worst case scenario for me at this point, but then I'm like, you know, as Blissey stays out here, I'm just going to continue to go for Seismic Tosses. Now, as they commit the third bulk up, this is when I realize that this guy knows something that I do not. As the Seismic Toss comes through, it's looking like I can easily take care of the fella. And honestly, if Blissey goes down here, I'm kind of fine with that. I can go into whatever I want that's faster and have myself a nice little time, at least since I've got this chip. So I go for another Seismic Toss here. Turns out they're actually, they have the rest. They also, of note, have not gotten a freaking paralyzed turn. And the rest in this situation is the exact reason why they're staying in and just continuing to go to the, for the bulk ups there. It's just easy to set up on the Blissey. And the nail in the coffin also has a freaking Chesto Berry. So Buddy wakes himself up, is now around full HP after one more Seismic Toss. And Blissey is like, well, that did not end up working out well for me. I decide I'm just going to go for another Thunder Wave here. There's a chance that I can still live in attack because Blissey does not die. And that's exactly what happens. We keep the egg intact, which now allows me to do some stuff. So I figure I might as well go for the Thunder Wave. Feels like I get a little bit more value as opposed to another Seismic Toss. And now we just get the added chance to potentially get a free turn if there is some paralysis. So honestly, I'm surprised that Blissey was able to kind of power through that. 
And also, not exactly sure on what the coverage is going to be on this thing's final move. I can at least now go for one more Seismic Toss because I am faster. Blissey is not faster than much, but a crippled Grimmsnarl. And we are at least able to outspeed. And now we do go down. So, with Blissey being gone, I can now switch into whatever I like. And one of the things about this team, it, its main mode is to try to get Flapple going. So, that's what I'm going to attempt. As I decide to bring in the... Uh, meow stick this thing can come in and I can essentially just turn the gravity on or off or yeah Turn the gravity off we touch the ground and now everything's all intense and uh, they do actually go for a sucker punch here Which is kind of annoying. I was hoping for a Spirit break there it does reveal the final move except for now I can just go for a reflect and I'm like that actually kind of ends up working out because now I can be much more bulky on the physical side as they do go for that spirit break so this Meow Stick is kind of, it's supposed to be hit. I, I try to, you know, maximize the amount of turns that I have with gravity. So I, ideally I go for a Prankster Gravity and then Eject Button out immediately. But we've got a couple turns of gravity to work with and I'm like, well, Johnny doesn't really look super great in this match. But it's kind of just, some. You, sometimes you just got to go test the damn laws of gravity and drop a big ass apple on a boy's head. So I bring in the Flapple here and now with my Hustle ability, I'm guaranteed to still hit without that drawback because of the gravity also does increase the damage of it so I'm gonna go for the Terra Steel on the chance that uh, most likely I'm not gonna be able to kill here because of those bulk ups but now I can at least live a spirit break if it does break through the paralysis so I put the axe on my damn apple's head and we're about to go full Isaac Newton on that ass and this Flapple is a bit difficult to pull off I've said it before but go check out the full Flapple video uh, if you missed it because it's actually it's pretty damn fun so it turns out they do actually get fully paired, which is kind of just annoying because now I wasted my Terra and now I'm just a Steel-type Apple for some reason. They try to go for the Sucker Punch, but actually get paralyzed again. So all the para luck, it comes around, it happens. So we do finish it off with that Grab Apple and with Grimmsnarl out of the way, that feels pretty good. Now I do at least have one turn left of the gravity and we get to see whatever they want to bring in here. So the problem with this Flapple setup in this matchup has been basically this asshole. The skeleton gator fella comes in and Skeledurge is a bit of a problem because obviously I cannot go for a grab apple. But what I can do is try to go at least for an endure here. Now what that's going to do is at least allow me to live the attack on one HP and then I can have kind of an acrobatics to do some stuff or at least lock myself into an outrage. Or it kind of just do something. So they go for the Torch Song. It sings just a, such a bad song that it nearly kills you. And I live on 1 HP. With that Endure, it's now going to activate uh, a Salak Berry after it gets its obvious special attack boost. But now, I'm going to be a very speedy Apple. The wings are flapping slow, but we are flying around all crazy. And I kind of, at this point, mainly just want to get as much chip as I can you know, on the Skeledurge. I, I realize, unless I get on myself a nice little crit with an Acrobatics, probably not going to be great but I can at least go for it and do not much even with the crit <laughs> because Skeledurge is way too damn thick over there looking like store-bought gravy so they do finish me off with that uh, with that torch song and at this point I have to make a little bit of a pivot in this matchup it's not looking great but listen to me very closely if you have a zebra on your side you're gonna be fine now I'm mostly just looking at this matchup thinking that there is a way for me to get uh, the Zeb Striker to pop off, but there's going to be need to be a couple of different things that need to happen here. So on this free switch in, or at least the Revenge switch, I decided to just go into the Mian Shao, as I obviously I can just go for something like a knockoff. And at least now the chip that I got with the Flapple puts this thing in range to just die from that knockoff, and they're just going to go ahead and let this thing die. Obviously it can't come back in without any heavy duty boots on Stealth Rock super easily. So that takes care of the Skeledurge, however now they can decide to switch into whatever they like. And as me and Shao's just don't, sitting over here floppy as hell waiting for an opponent, they decide to go into the jump bluff. And this is the exact poofy pink little bastard we have been waiting for. Because as we're looking at it here, there's a pretty good chance they're going to try to hit me with a sleep powder. So I'm going to predict that. And I decide to go into one zebra who is very thirsty for some, for some grass, I guess. I go into Zeb Striker predicting the sleep powder and they do go for it, which is absolutely amazing. Now we get some sap sipper and we are sipping it up out here. That's going to boost our attack. To levels where now the tables have kind of turned. Zeb Strike honestly looks actually amazing here. And all I need now is just a little bit of speed. So as they switch out the jump bluff, I'm going to go for the flame charge. As he's actually just going to end up going right into the Greninja. So Frog comes in, but he is stanced the hell up. And I do go for that flame charge, which is now going to make my zebra with a booty real fast out here. I get that speed boost. And that is going to make me definitely faster than a Greninja. So at this point, all I got to do 
is connect on a Supercell Slam, but they actually have the priority in the form of the Shadow Snake. That's going to do a little bit of damage, especially with some extra stab, but the Zebra does not care. I can now connect on a Supercell Slam, absolutely slam the hell out of him from the top ropes, and that is going to take care of the Greninja. So here's the situation. We are boosted on both speed and attack, and there may have never been a scarier Zebra. Once we get that a little bit of sap, the, the mouth is sticky, but the vibes are high. So they are now able to bring in the Mian Shao as a revenge switch in. I am in fact faster and I can Supercell Slam him. With that attack boost, it is gonna be enough to take care of it. And that is why we love Supercell Slam. When it does not miss, at least, it does a whole lot of damage as long as you at least have an attack boost. At this point, they've seen a little bit of the coverage, and as they decide to bring in the Jolteon, they're probably feeling like I can't really hit it with a Supercell Slam, obviously, or a Flame Charge. But what they do not know is I am, in fact, also a horse. I can go for the high horsepower. We are faster than a Jolteon after the speed boost. And a little hoof to the face, I imagine, does not feel great. And as we turn a little bit yellow there just to flex, they are now realizing the power that is Zeb Strika. And honestly, we found ourselves in a late game position here where Zeb Strika is an easy win condition out here. They can go back into the jump bluff, but they have already seen the flame charge, and I'm just gonna go ahead and charge them once more. They are gonna end up busting out the, kind of a, a late game terror, their final mon. Probably just figure, obviously they've seen the flame charge, maybe. If they go flying type, it'd be at least a neutral hit and they can try to get some jump left shenanigans going. This thing usually is the damn devil to me, but I can just outspeed, go for that flame charge. It does just kill through the Terra, and that is gonna be how Zeb Strika can absolutely turn some nonsense around. And that was actually kinda crazy with <laughs> how that game was going. Zeb Strika absolutely clutches it. That is going to be the end of it, and this damn zebra has gone where no zebra has gone before, and that is now gonna bring us into game number two. And I wanna try to get the Zebra to do a little bit more, and we also have a brand new team we're working with here. So listen, if you've stuck around and are enjoying the video, make sure to hit that like button. It really does help out the channel, and every time you click it, YouTube smiles. So it definitely, and me, I guess, make help, help me smile. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So here's a quick little breakdown of the team that I'm working with. First of all, Sun. I lead off with the Torkoal as they're working with the Comfey, and uh, the Torkoal is like, hey, it's actually not sunny enough out here. I'm gonna go ahead and just cause a drought. Everybody's thirsty as hell, especially the Zebra for some sap. Doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to get some sap zipper shenanigans, but it's fine. So I decided to just go for the Stealth Rock here, and essentially his team is kind of working with a Leveny that's working with Chlorophyll to try to get some Fell Stinger. And then there is a Alolan Executor who is working with a Trick Room, kind of a reverse speed shenanigans. And that's kind of all you need to know about the squad. Of course, also the Zebra doing his Zebra stuff. At, at this point, I have been Leech Seated, and I was like, damn, I really wish I could have gone into Zeb Striker there and got the Sap Sipper turn one. Um, except, I'm just like, you know, I probably imagine they switch out here. Comfey can't really do too much to me with kind of a weird matchup. So I decide to actually end up switching into my Samurott as they actually switch into the Dragapult. Now, Dragapult, always a damn problem. He's got his little ghostly tail, and this fella is either a special attacker or a physical attacker, and it's real good at both. So, as I switch into the Samurott, I'm mainly just here to set up some spikes. I'm gonna go for a Ceaseless Edge. I'm actually Assault Vested, except they end up going for the U-turn, and that does a bunch of damage, which is annoying, and now allows them to pivot into whatever they like which is going to end up bringing in the Crocodile. So as Crocodile comes in, I at least am going to be able to get off a Ceaseless Edge to try to get some spikes. That's mainly just there to try to weaken stuff to at least let the Zebra you know, get some more damage or at least not have to deal with things at full HP because without Sap Sipper, at least any attack boost, you have kind of a bad time. So as the Crocodile comes in, we do get Intimidated. Tells me that maybe this isn't like a Moxie Scarf set. It might be like a setup set. I'm just going to go for the Sacred Sword regardless. I do have the coverage. And boom, slices his ass up, even with the Intimidate does not matter when you get the crit, which I don't know if that crit mattered, but regardless, that is going to be a dead-ass Crocodile, and that feels pretty good. So, this now allows them to switch back into the Comfey, who is a bit of a problem for the Samurott here. They have a couple different options. They could go for something like the Leech Seed, expecting the switch. They could go for a Draining Kiss, or something like a Giga Drain. So, I decide I'm actually just going to switch into the Zebra. There's a chance that they go for the Leech Seed, expecting a switch. And you already know Zapadash loves when we get hit with grass. And it turns out they actually go for the Draining Kiss, you know, which does make sense. But uh, I, I feel like that's kind of fine as I'm able to get the Zebra in relatively free here. The problem with this friggin' Flower Necklace 
it comes that, of course, with its draining moves, it always is able to go first with that uh, triage ability. So I'm just gonna go for the flame charge regardless, get myself a nice little boost. It also is helped a little bit by that sun. So we do a round half to the guy, but uh, they actually end up going for the grassy terrain, which is kind of fine with me. Also, I feel like grassy terrain should activate freaking sap sipper. I'm literally standing all over grass, getting healed by it. I'm literally sipping the grass, except I guess not, which is funny, but um, I'm just gonna go for now a supercell slam. They actually do not end up switching, and that is gonna be a dead big old bundle of flowers, which feels pretty good, because that thing is annoying. Now, they go for the grassy terrain, which is interesting, but I kind of, at this point, I feel like I know what they're working with, and it also is healing me up in the process, so it kind of negates my life orb, and it also feels good on my hooves at the same time, so we also have a guy that's working with some hooves, and that is gonna be the go-go, so as Tom Brady the goat comes in, the reason why they're working with the go-goat and that grassy terrain is because not only is it able to activate a grassy seed to boost its defense, but this thing also gets the ability Grass Pelt, which boosts its defense by 50% on grassy terrain. So they know I'm a physical attacker and they're fully expecting physical attacks. And that is why we are in a perfect position to be our mixed attacking self and go for an overheat instead. So I figure it's in my best interest to go for the Terra Flying. It kind of covers for if they do want to Terra themselves. And as I was thinking about it, I was like, it would help potentially dodge an Earthquake, but then you probably don't pair that with the grassy terrain anyway. But I'm able to outspeed and an overheat absolutely roast and toast the goat Tom Brady. And that is one of those situations where having a kind of just like a nuke button in the form of overheat, especially in the sun, is really helpful because that goat was not gonna be affected by physical attacks. And so that overheat comes in extremely clutch. And while we are now floating above the grassy train, we do not get the benefit of the heal from it. And at this point, they can go into the Dragapult. So I am actually faster than Dragapult at this point. And I'm thinking I could get some damage here. I kind of think maybe they go for a Terra or I just not gonna be able to do enough damage. So I wanna conserve the Zeb Strika because there are things in the back, potentially like the Skarmory that I could be useful for. And honestly, Torkoal comes in relatively easy on this thing. We've seen the U-turn. I imagine it's probably a physical attacker. And living up to the deadbeat dad name, Buddy just straight up launches his children off of his head at my turtle face. And that hurts a little bit, but I'm physically defensive, which is fine. And at this point, I'm thinking, shit, I actually can't really do too much to the Dragapult. And as they go for the Dragon Dance, I'm like, yeah, this could actually kind of get out of hand here. Dragapult is insane. And my main goal, reason why I clicked the Lava Plume is, first of all, to blow up and act like I don't know nobody, but also for the chance to roll for a burn. And as they get that Dragon Dance up, sitting at plus one attack and speed, this thing is a damn problem. And I really am not looking great against that, other than if I can get myself a nice little burn. Now, they get a little bit on the greedy side. They're gonna go for another Dragon Dance here. At plus two, quite the scary Dragon, and Lava Plume in the sun is not doing much, but what it does do is gives me a nice little burn. We do thank God connect on the burn the second try, and that is going to make my life a whole lot easier. Mostly, honestly, just for Torkoal. We got our eyes closed because we're afraid of this Dragapult, but then I'm like, actually, with a burn, I can still take attacks pretty much all day from this thing. It just kind of gets to the point where I can't do too much damage in return. So they actually just decide to go for another Dragon Dance. This thing realizes that, hey, I, my best shot is to at least get Dragapult to the point where they can knock out the Torkoal. And I'm just gonna continue throwing out plumes. I'm getting some pretty considerable chip, stacking up with that uh, burn at least a little bit, and Torkoal still, as the game goes on, we're getting more and more healthy here. So that burn was quite clutch, and that is why all my homies love the Lava Plume. And at this point, they're kind of forced to attack. They go for the Dragon Darts just to see how much it's gonna do, and your children do not even scratch the turtle. We eat it no problem. And one more Lava Plume puts it in range to where the burn would kill it, but this damn grass is just still out here doing its grassy nonsense, and it does allow it to take uh, the burn damage there. So looking at it, Torkoal still doesn't really care at this point. The grass does go away, which is just kind of beneficial. And then I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna continue to throw out plumes at this point. It turns out they're actually gonna go for the U-turn, however, which is fine because I'm like, you know, at least that thing comes back in. It doesn't have dragon dances and uh, they probably figured they weren't gonna be able to kill anyway. And they do still have this little meteor fella. So as Minior comes in, it shields down, does activate, puts on the, uh, it actually didn't even, it didn't even change there. It's supposed to put on a freaking bunch of rocks and stuff to make him more defensive, but then as I go for that Lava Plume, it goes 
back to shields down, and then now it, it looks exactly the same. But I can assure you now, it actually does not have the defensive stats, and it's actually now working with way more speed. So if there's one thing we know from a Minior, is that this little fella is going to try to shell smash here. And I decide I am actually just going to go right into the Samurott at this point, just knowing that it's basically their win condition and going for... Uh, you know, the Shell Smash, it is going to end up going for it. Turns into a Clam, and then now he's just back to being a little guy. Obviously, he's going to drop the defenses, but now give it that uh, offensive boost along with speed. And this fella is quite quick and honestly can kill pretty much everything I have with one hit. But the reason why we go Samurott is just because I'm actually working with the Sucker Punch. I did have access to priority in the form of Aqua Jet. But Sucker Punch has way more synergy here. I can just go for that Sucker Punch, and even though uh, its defensive stats reset with that White Herb, it still was in Shield's down form, so it was not bulky enough to be able to live a Sucker Punch, and the Narwhal saves our damn lives there versus the little Comet fella. The thing is, they do in fact still have some threats on their side, and as they're able to bring in the Skarmory, this is a guy that is not great for the Samurai here. I don't know exactly what this Skarmory is going to be working with, but at this point, I just decided to go right back into the Torkoal. It potentially, it sets up the sun uh, for the threats in the back if I need them, and the drought is now here. So, it turns out this thing's actually going to go for that iron defense. That's going to double that defensive stat and tells me exactly what this Skarmory is working with, which is going to be like a body press set. And as I go for the Lava Plume here, I'm still thinking the same thing. A burn actually would be kind of nice. Now... While Body Press does take the defensive stat as attack, it actually does still get hindered by being burnt. And now they actually go ahead and commit the Terra. They, they're going all in on the Skarmory at this point. Going to go for that Terra Water, which is quite annoying for my Lava Plumes. And they're also able to set up a second friggin' Iron Defense. Now this thing is just fully defensive, and I do not get the burn on my Lava Plume here. And I'm like, well, Lava Plume actually does the same exact damage as an Earth Power uh, in the Sun. So I'm going to go for it again here as they go for another Iron Defense, getting up to plus six. And that's actually going to give me a little bit of intel in that this thing is working with Roost. But the problem is you cannot Roost away that burn. We do get another burn. And honestly, Torkoal is extremely clutch coming through with these Lava Plume burns today. So at this point, I'm like, well, I can't really switch out. I'm just going to now go for an Earth Power once I've gotten that burn it's actually more beneficial for me to get a special defense drop from an Earth Power. So they do go for the Roost, which is to be expected. Earth Power does absolutely nothing, but it does get that Spadef drop, which is uh, actually pretty damn nice. And surely they're going to have to go for some Body Press nonsense sooner or later. I'm going to continue throwing some Earth at them, but I do get Body Pressed there. So Fountain Bird does take care of the Torkoal. And while this thing is literally made out of steel and water, I cannot touch this thing on the physical side. What I can do, however, is touch him on the special side, especially with that special defense drop. Faceplant is the perfect coconut fella for the job. It's sunny out here. I can just go for a Giga Drain. So the sun is actually just for harvest, but uh, I, I know that this is gonna be able to outspeed, and this is why that burn was clutch. The body press is not able to do enough damage to knock me out, and the Giga Drain is going to be able to do it for us. So not only do we get some health back, but we take care of the Skarmory, and we got the longest damn neck in the game flexing out here. So Skarmory goes down. Final Pokemon is actually going to be that Dragapult, which is perfect. The Deadbeat Dad comes in, and it is not going to be able to last long. It is going to die to the next burn turn, so even if they are able to kill me here, that is going to be the game. So I thought that was just an interesting match, just kind of messing around with the Zebra and a whole bunch of new stuff. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I had a lot of fun with it. Thank you guys so much for the support. I absolutely will never be able to express how much I appreciate you guys supporting the videos, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.